Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a different video. Uh, a lot of people have asked me, you know, on and off, what is the difference between a custom computer and something that they can buy at the store? Uh, especially, let's say, if they want to do gaming, uh, photography, stuff like that. They want something very powerful, you know. And so, they want like an i7, they want gaming, they want to be able to do photography. They, want, they don't really want to know, they don't know all the tech specs, they just want to know that they can do all of that okay and technology can be uh kind of overwhelming to the layman especially if you don't know tech specs and you know if you don't have a, a working knowledge of what components do it can be fairly overwhelming so you go to the store like best buy or you know things like that and you go and you see this computer being demoed and the salesman or saleswoman says this is this will do this this will do that uh powerful this powerful that but you know what they're always going to catch you on? And you ask them about, you know, the warranty. Or they're going to ask you about the warranty because they're going to tell you specifically that this only has a year warranty from the manufacturer. Why is that? Okay, the reason why is that most of the parts that they put in there are very generic. One or two components will stand out as being something exceptional. And they'll really push that. Uh, this particular computer, uh, the case is you know from or made or contracted by gateway it has their gateway logo on there and it's not a really bad case at all it has you know hot swappable bays here that has a uh, has a closable door here it has a retractable front panel for your eight you know headphone microphone firewire a backup button power you know expansion base here it has a pop-up a multimedia card reader here which may or may not last because you see they're uh, kind of spongy there 750 gig hard drive it has a 140 millimeter case fan in the back it has a cutout and I'm going to this is really important actually so I'm going to go get a uh, my flashlight on it a little bit darker in the room it actually does have a cutout for an 80 millimeter front intake fan but they haven't installed it and they should have uh, but if they do install it, it can get loud. And that's something that people don't like because they don't know that if you buy something very powerful, you have to cool it off, you know? And the case might look very tall, but it's very deceptive because what you actually have is, we have in front of us, as you can see, it is a micro ATX case. It's not a ATX case. It has the illusion of being a little bit taller because of this uh, plastic base on the bottom which elevates the uh, the case uh, roughly about an, uh, an inch or two almost an inch and a half as you can see it's empty space you know and they this would make sense if for example you do a little cutout here a little cutout here for an exhaust fan or intake fan to uh, cool off the system but they haven't done that so for me it's pointless um, not to mention it could break well, uh, besides that, the case is pretty decent, especially because they give this little, you know, touchpad deal up there, which probably wouldn't last much. You can't see it right now. It's not lit up. Um, but they do make the case, okay? So they do make the case. This particular computer was advertised to come with, and I believe I still have that sheet because I do want to make the comparison. Um, it is the FX. I'm going to get the front panel off the ground and uh, we can take a look at uh, what it has if I remember. Oh, there it is. Bear with me, no cameraman today. Here's the side panel. FX lettering, very nice. Now, what do we have here? We have them advertising it as an, the FX 6800-01E, a gaming supercomputer. Extremely fast frame rates, lightning fast performance, Core i7, 920, uh, Windows Vista, home premium 64-bit with Service Pack 1, the ATI, uh, HD Radeon 4850, but only with 512 megabytes of uh, video RAM, uh, one DVD burner, the Core i7, 920, and lo and behold, only 3 gigs of DDR3 RAM. <laughs> but, and that, you know, that doesn't make sense. 3 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM on a 64-bit OS. 64-bit OSs tend to take about 2 gigs to run effectively at idle. Uh, so, 
again, that's, it's not anything that was designed with uh, a lot of forethought. Um, and if it was, they had to cut back on the quality of the components to get any amount of money from this uh, build. Uh, and they'll get the money from additional uh, warranties and such like that from the store and such. So, this is the motherboard that came with the uh, computer. Now, what happened was the capacitor, there was a short in the board. And once the camera zooms in correctly, I hope that we can see it. Uh, but this capacitor right here, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if you can see it as good as I can. This capacitor right here, I'm going to take it out, is actually bulging. And there's a capacitor right on top, and you can see that capacitor is not bulging. Now, this is probably a short, you know, a short coming from on the motherboard, uh, probably coming from uh, a faulty power supply. Uh, or somebody causing the short by opening and touching or whatever. We don't exactly know, but the power supply is not testing very well. It's actually, um, I'm idle. It's uh, with intolerance uh, in terms of the, uh, the voltages. However, when it's running, we can't really know. You have to run software or, you know, test the uh, motherboard on the fly. Uh, but nonetheless, damage was done. This particular memory stick here was actually, was bad. Um, and these men test test that these two are still good so effectively a bad board a uh, very popular processor during the, its time um, but it was very pricey too and uh, but it is an i7 you know it is an i7 uh, they did include a fairly decent sized cooler with it it's not anything smaller cheapish looking it's got some weight to it the power supply that probably could not cause all the problem was this light on power supply 450 watts uh, very generic looking um, and here is the generic uh, ATI Radeon HD 4850 with 512 dedicated uh, video RAM and uh, it's you know let's see if the memory is cooled the memory is actually cooled so it has a decent cooler on it big thick uh, cooler uh, with a uh, blower style fan and no branding so again we don't know who built this um, and the motherboard the same thing no branding it's more than likely it's a Foxconn board though um, and they did you know include quite a bit uh, e SATA uh, 246 USB uh, 2.0 your HD audio firewire serial and then PS2 ports here um, but again uh, damage is done damage is done but being an i7 and uh, talked to the customer and they said, you know, why don't we just rebuild it? You know, you just, why don't we just rebuild the computer? You would still have an i7. You know, you would still have an i7 um, with decent raw power to run modern things. So it's not like this person is a, a ma massive avid gamer, and, you know, is their family computer. Um, so. What I have in front of me is the Asus Republic of Gamers Rampage 3 uh, uh, Genie board. Yes, it's kind of an overkill board, but um, believe it or not, have, being a micro ATX uh, case, and it really is a micro, micro ATX case, not many boards are around now. Uh, so this is what was available uh, to me at the time. And it's not a bad board, of course. It's actually the premium board. Um, and it's uh, pretty powerful. Uh, I mean, it has, has a lot of features. It has the XFI uh, Supreme FX uh, sound card in there. Full solid capacitors, so you don't have to worry about bulging capacitors or breaking capacitors. It's all full solid caps. And maximum memory support of 24 gigs. I believe DR3 up to 2000 megahertz. Uh, but don't quote me on that at the moment. Um, you have a lot more SATA connectors, and you have SATA, two SATA 3 connectors here, um, or SATA 6, I'm sorry, um, SATA 3, 6.0 gigabits per second, okay, 24 pin connector, you have your, uh, you have pro points here for manual testing voltages on fly, uh, CMOS, uh, you have two PCI Express 16X here, uh, you have your uh, mini P uh, PCI Express here, and one legacy uh, PCI port here. Start, reset uh, button. I believe that is CMOS reset here. 
Um, I don't believe that this uh, during this time, I don't believe that there was uh, USB 3.0 uh, on the uh, motherboard itself. That would have been on the back by the I.O. plate. So uh, this red, I believe, is going to be for 1394. But let's take a look at the back of the board. And you do see two USB 3.0 headers there. Uh, you see two, four, let's see, two, four, six, uh, seven USB 2.0. Uh, CMOS reset um, and I can't recall what this is this might be one of the links for um, their Republic of Gamers stuff can't remember what that is it's this is a little bit older board so I have to look it up again um, but still nonetheless it's still a three year warranty from the manufacturer uh, the power supply that we're going to replace it with is Antex uh, Eco Neo 520 watt power supply uh, much more powerful power supply, continuous watt, continuous power, 80 plus uh, rated. So very, very nice power supply. Big fan, hefty, much heavier. Uh, you have um, uh, braided or sleeved uh, uh, cables and everything right there. And what we did was we bought a Blade Master uh, 80 from uh, Cooler Master uh, for that front intake which it needs and this is actually a pretty fast uh, uh, case fan I believe the uh, CFM rating is 40.8 and it might be noisy at 40.8 but you know considering the amount of power that this thing is going to be actually be consuming and you know, outputting it's it's I think that it's safe safer to have it in there uh, and also we have a fresh copy of Windows uh, 732 bit I believe I have it somewhere here but um, yes we do, Windows 7 32 bit, OEM. So what is the difference between a custom computer that is built by a system builder and a computer that you buy at the store? Parts, quality, selection, you have control over what you want to build uh, from a system builder. Uh, you can build, you can choose parts that uh, are a good balance between price and performance and you know longevity and not only that you get your own copy of Windows 7 you know and that's a big big money saver in the future the biggest difference is that you know they have money Gateway or HP or Dell has money to make cases to have their branding on the cases and that's about it but you do not see Gateway here you don't see Gateway's name on this. You don't see Gateway's name on the power supply or on the CPU cooler. And actually, this is this is a Foxconn cooler, so more than likely it's a, a Foxconn board uh, or something made from Acer. But again, what would you rather have? Um, but what we have laid out in front of us is how we're going to rebuild this computer. Uh, I'll post a final video of the build, and so stay tuned for that. Any questions, comments, or thoughts, please put them at the bottom of the video. Thanks for watching.